Had a little oopsie the other day with my laptop. Apparently I put it somewhere I shouldn't have and it made an awful mess. Look at that. So what I have here is a broken screen on the laptop. And what I'm going to show you in this video is A, how to deal with a broken screen until you can get a replacement or you don't have to replace it at all. And uh, B, how to actually replace it. So the first thing I've done, I've ordered this screen and you can get them very, very inexpensively on the internet. And um, in the meantime, while I'm waiting for it to come in, I have hooked my computer up via an HDMI cable. You can see that there. Into any modern TV manufactured in the last three or four years, it has an HDMI input. Actually, they have several. I could hook it up to my 55-inch, but that's ridiculous. So you can see here you've got HDMI in, and also there's a couple on the side here. And I could also hook it up to my big one, too, but again, that's ridiculous, and the wife would kill me. Hi, honey. Okay, so I've ordered the screen already, and uh, when it comes in, I will show you how to take this guy off, which I've kind of halfway done. I don't want to spoil it. A couple of screws to remove. It's actually easier to think there's one cable, too, but you have to be really careful with it because they are very fragile. And uh, as soon as that comes in, we'll finish the video. My poor screen smashed. You can see it's kind of spreading down here too. It's looking kind of gnarly. Good news is the new screen came in today. And this is what you're going to need. You're going to need a rubber mallet, a drywall saw, and the most important part is the sock puppet. No, I'm just kidding. You don't need any of this stuff. The only thing you need is a tiny little screwdriver. And I'll show you how this thing, how this thing comes apart. All right, so this is a Toshiba Ultra Book, and it doesn't have many screws around the side. Some of these you can see on these older gateways have little rubber things, and underneath them you have to peel them back, and there's a little screw there underneath some tacky glue that's been there for a hundred years. On the bottom there were, there's little rubber clips on top of this, little rubber stickers, and I pulled those off and just unscrewed them using a tiny little Phillips head screwdriver. To take this bad boy apart, you get a little screwdriver and you have to try to pry this apart. I've already done this, but it's kind of hard to see here. I just stuck my nail in and you just kind of pull it apart and you'll hear it cracking. Just kind of be careful. You can really get a screwdriver and just kind of push in. There's little plastic tabs that kind of pull out. And you do that on both sides. And then the bottom, often there's a lot of tape in there. Some of them have a little piece of uh, either electrical tape or some kind of weird uh, plastic tape in here. So you have to give that a good tug. And then once these screws are off, it just kind of comes off. And there you are. There's your screen held in with the uh, screws. And that's really it. There's just a bunch of little screws you have to take out here. I've taken them out already. Then I have two screws on here that I've already removed. Tiny little black screws. Just make sure you have a little magnet or something to keep track of those screws. Otherwise, they get lost very easily. And then there's a, uh, a couple in the bottom here. All right, so I've removed all the screws from this thing. Another in important thing is you want to make sure your computer's powered off when you're doing this. I'm leaving it on because I'm a qualified technician and I know what I'm doing and I enjoy being shocked. No, I'm just kidding, but you should definitely make sure it's turned off, unplug the battery, make sure there's no power coming to this thing. There's a bunch of voltage going through the power inverter in some of these computers, especially the older ones. So I've taken the bottom screws off, and this thing will kind of pull apart. Now on the back here, you'll see the connectors held together by a little piece of tape. And you have to kind of slowly and carefully pull that off, because if you rip that connector, you're in a world of hurt, and you have to replace that, and that's an ugly repair. So kind of pull the tape off very gently and that's it and underneath here it's kind of upside down you'll see where the monitor is physically connected to the uh, computer via this cable here and it's a very thin and fragile cable so you need to be very very careful with it in this case it's on the bottom sometimes you'll see the connector on the top area in some of the Dell computers especially the older ones they have two connectors one for power and uh, well most of them have power connector but I want for a special proprietary Dell slot. So I'm going to turn this guy off and then remove this and then we'll continue. Alright, it's now powered down. And most of these have this thin little strip of tape here that holds this guy in. And again, it's very, very fragile underneath. So you need to be very careful. So what I'll usually do is 
pry this tape off very gently with the tip of a screwdriver or my nail if I can get under here and then it kind of pulls up it's just like a really heavy weird kind of plastic tape so this is the replacement screen I bought it online for about 50 bucks from a company called Screen Country um, I think it's shipped out of Seattle there's a couple companies that ship overseas. You can buy screens on eBay, although I'm not too sure about the reliability. We only do that in a pinch. But, yeah, about 50 bucks for this one. It's a small 14-inch, and these are mass-produced, so they're pretty easy to get and pretty affordable right now. Some of the screens go up to $200 to $229, depending on the size and type of the screen. So, And you see this little area down here that says don't touch, and I've learned through experience if something says don't touch, you should probably not touch it. There's either a fragile light bulb or some kind of electronics or something inside of here that uh, you shouldn't press on or play with, especially when the thing's powered on. It could be electronic, it could be electric, it could be something that gives you a real nasty shock. So try not to touch that. Um, this comes with a protective screen on it. It's taped on with masking tape, pretty easy to get off. I usually leave it on until the uh, screen's installed and I check it and make sure it works and then I'll just uh, cut this off with an X-Acto knife. So let's go ahead and put it in and see what happens. So we're going to do exactly the opposite of what we did to take it apart. So I'm going to take this tiny little doodad here and line it up on here. And before I screw it in, I'm going to make sure that this replacement screen actually works. There's some bad ones come from the factory and then you just send it back and um, they'll send you another one. So I'm going to plug it in and make sure everything works. So that actually, that connector was a bear to put in. It was very flexible and uh, kind of difficult to secure without breaking it. So I had to be very careful. But uh, she lights right up. It looks good. Uh, the next thing I'll do is check it for multiple bad pixels, which is very rare. I rarely see any bad pixels come in new screens, but it happens once in a while. And then we'll just cut this guy off. Or you could just rip it too. You won't see the edges of the tape underneath the, uh, the bezel protector. And she looks good. It looks perfect. Now we'll just screw her back in and uh, make sure everything lines up great. And uh, we'll take a look at that and, and view our finished job. Sometimes it's helpful to have a layout of where everything goes because it's difficult to tell which screw goes in which hole. And if you don't put it in the right place, the bezel usually won't fit on nicely. So just make sure. Draw a little paper diagram of what screw goes where. Sometimes they're different sizes or different colors. But uh, if you keep track of which one goes where, it'll make your job a little bit easier. Alright, now the last step is putting the bezel back on and it'll just snap on just like it snapped off. Um, usually just if it has little hinge covers, you just pop them in first. That'll give you a good guide and, and you just kind of snap it back into place. Sometimes it doesn't sound right at first. You may have to go over it once or twice. Careful not to push too hard. You end up cracking your new screen, and that would be bad. And then there's a couple screws that go in the front, and any covers for the aesthetic value to make sure that they look good. And that's it. That's how you repair a laptop screen.